Okay, welcome to part one uh, of this tutorial series. This will most likely be the only part. Um, I have removed the PHP code from this file we're working with, random.php. Um, so at the moment, you can see it just says random password is nothing. If we just go to our file, you can see that it just says random password and there's an empty PHP block. In here, we're going to call our function that we're going to create. Um, now, I'm going to be defining that function in this block here. Um, instead of like including a backend file and all that sort of stuff just for like a function that has about four lines in it. Um, just bear in mind that this is something you should never do for like a production actual site or something you're actually developing. Um, you should always have like separate backend files for functions or if you want to follow a more um, sort of strict thing um, then you can do that but you should never ever define functions in the same file as your sort of output HTML page. I'm just doing it here to demonstrate the function because that's what this tutorial is about um, and it's not a very complicated thing so I don't want to go into sort of have to explain the sort of folder structure as I usually do. Anyway, so uh, that's that explained. Um, so I'm going to be defining the function here like I said and the function is going to be called random string. What this function will do is take a parameter which is the length and it will return a random string of characters, uh, you know, that, that many characters. So I'm going to define the function here using the function keyword. Function name is going to be random string. And like I said, its parameter is going to be the length. Spelled wrong. Length. So that's our function basically defined. And just to test it, I'm going to have it return. There we go. Return test. And then down here, where we're going to call our function, we're just going to have echo random string. And the length is going to be 10. So you can see that using that function name, it kind of makes sense. So someone coming back later, but obviously without seeing this definition, because that'll be hidden off in a backend file somewhere, will know exactly what this code is doing. Random string is obviously a function that returns a random string. So anyway, if I just reload our page now, you can see we get random password is equal to test. Um, and that's just because we return test. So whatever, re whatever we return here will um, come up after the random password thing. So I'm going to delete that because we're not going to be uh, returning test all the time. We want to re return something that's random. So um, yeah, that's it. That's what we're doing. So um, right, what we need to do in here is define a sort of set of characters that we're going to make up our random password from. I'm going to define a new variable called char set, and this is going to be equal to an array. And that what this array needs to contain is sort of all the alphabets in uppercase and lowercase and numbers. Because that's what we want our password to be made up of, as many characters as possible. The problem with defining this manually is that you'll have like it'll take forever. I mean look I've already done it wrong for one. And that's as far as I've got. It's already taking quite a while. Well, you know, fairly quite a while. Um Luckily for us, PHP has a function that will return an array of elements between two characters. Um, the best way to do this will be to demonstrate. So if I just do here print underscore r char set, remember the print underscore r function um, outputs an array in sort of a text, a textual representation of an array in a way that like people can understand it. So if I just reload our page now. You can see we get this output array naught a one b two c, and this corresponds to the elements I typed here. Whoops, here a b and c. So I just delete this now and replace it with whoops the range function. Um, this function takes two parameters: the first one being the start character and the second one being the end character. So if I supply a as the start character and let's say d as the end character, and then reload our page you see we get the same output but now with D. So this range function has returned an array containing four elements A, B, C and D. Um, so obviously we want A to Z, we want the whole alphabet. So if I reload this now, we get the whole alphabet. All the way up to Z. Um, and another problem is that we want to combine this with uppercase um, and numbers. And the way we're going to be doing that, doing that here is using um, the array merge function. What the array merge function does is takes like um, an unlimited number of parameters, all of which need to be arrays, and then it sort of joins them all end on end. 
So say if you had one array that was A, B, C, and another array that was D, E, F, um, and then you used array merge on both of those arrays, you would get the result of that as one array, which contains A, B, C, D, E, F. I'll, I'll demonstrate that now by using sort of a simple example. So if we do A to C again here, and we do we want to join this two, um, so we can use array merge like so. And what we want to join it to is another array, which is the result of the range function. And that's going to be D to F. And if we reload our page now, we get a syntax error because I have been stupid. Oops, there we go. Fixed. See now we get the array I just said I just said A B C D E F. And this is made up of these two arrays, A to C and D to F. So if we change this now to A to Z and uppercase A to uppercase Z and reload our page now, you can see we get the alphabet twice, once in uppercase and once in lowercase. So all we need to do now is also add numbers to the end of this. So we're adding a, a third parameter to the array merge function, which is the range function again, and this time it's 0 to 9. If we reload our page again, you see now we have numbers on the end of this array as well. And then that's sort of our character set sort of defined. So we have an array of letters that we want to sort of randomize and then take a portion of. Um, you could define each of these as variables if you wanted to make it a bit clearer. So you could have like lowercase equals this, uppercase equals this, and numbers equals this. But I'm just doing it on one line because it's a bit sort of neater, a bit nicer. Um, so you can sort of do it however you like. Um, hopefully I've made it clear enough. I think I have to be honest. Anyway, um, so right, moving on, before I get bogged down in saying nothing. Um, what we need to do next after we've defined the array of characters is sort of randomize them. So PHP has a function for this called shuffle. What the shuffle function does is takes a single array and sort of makes it random, basically. So it moves all of the elements into new random positions. Um, you don't, it's, it works in the same way as the sort functions. You don't use its result, you just apply it to the array. So we do shuffle char set, not doing anything with the result of that function. So if we reload our page again, you can see that the elements are now in a completely different order. If you just look at this top line, it'll be easier than trying to understand it all. So look at this top line, if I just reload it again, you can see that the um, sort of characters in those, like, well, look at the character in the first space, is randomly changing. Loads of times. So that's our sort of random um, sort of characters, basically. And the way we're going to generate our password is by taking the first length characters out of this array. I'm going to do that using the array slice function. So now if we do define a new variable called password, and that's going to be equal to array slice. And then the first parameter of the array slice function is the actual array you want to take a portion of, uh, which is the char set um, array, which has now been shuffled, so it's now in a random order. The second parameter is the start element you want to, like the slice, basically, the portion you want. So 0 for here, because we're starting with the first element. And the third parameter is the final parameter. Uh, is it the final parameter or the number of parameters? You should look that up. But we're going to use length here. Um, yeah, OK, it, wor it works in the same way as the substring function, basically. So this is actually the number of characters you want. I'm fairly confident on that. <laughs> um, but feel free to check and then not correct me. Um, right, so now we have a password. Um, and what this will be is the first 10 elements of this char set array that we printed out a moment ago. So if I now do print underscore r char set and then add a second print underscore, whoops, print underscore r of password now and reload our page again, you can see now I get two arrays. If I just load our page source to make it a bit easier to see, uh, maybe not actually, <laughs> let's hide this and bring it up slightly. Okay, well, this is the array output, so this is our char set in a random order. You can see it starts with 1ZWAEPNASEK. -E so then if we scroll down, you can see our second array has that same output, except it's not K because that would be 11. Um, I forgot it starts at 0, 
Uh, apparently I can't count development there. Um, anyway, um, so now we have like the first ten characters here. Oops, here. Good. Highlighting. Um, so these are the first ten characters of this big array. And this is the result of the array slice function. So if you want, you can, it's a good way to think about it. Um, if you've done a lot of, well, done some s uh, string manipulation using the substring that function before, then this array slice function is comparable to that, except it works with arrays, not strings. Anyway, what we want to do next, after we have our password, is obviously we don't want to return an array of characters, we want to return an actual string. And for this we're going to be using the implode function. Um, so what we're going to return is the results of the implode function. Now I do have a basics video on explode and implode functions. They're two very useful functions that you should basically know for PHP. Um, so if you don't know what this does, go and watch that. But basically what it does is takes two parameters. The first one is a character. So if I just specify an empty string as that. And the second one is the array uh, that you want to implode. So I will just specify a password. What this will do is take this all the elements in this array, put this character between each one, and then return the result of that as a string. So now, if I load our page, you can see we get this random password equals string. If you just if you want to pause the video and count those characters, you will see that there are ten. Um, I'm not going to do that obviously now because that'd be silly. Uh, if I keep reloading it, you can see that each time we load the page, we get a new random. Um, a new random string in a random order. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. Um, well, so I was going to say something else. Oh yeah, if I, just, if I change the length to say 20 and reload our page, so we get a longer random string. Um, so yeah, you can basically use this to generate random passwords or to have like unique image uploads or some uh, file names or something. Um, or I suppose you could use it as like the key parameter in like a URL shortening site or something. Well, that's probably not the best thing to use it for. Um, so yeah, that's basically the end of this video. Um, remember, you should never define a function here, uh, like on the output sort of page. This should always be hidden away somewhere in like a backend type file. I've just defined it here because it's like a four-line function, so it'd be a bit pointless to have like wait, I'd need three files for that, wouldn't I? So it makes a bit more sense just to have it for this video. I'm just demonstrating it by defining it here and outputting here, but you shouldn't do that. Okay, so thanks for watching, and that's basically it. So there you go.